is Shannon. I'm 20 years old, and I'm addicted to drinking gasoline. What? No, danger zone. <laughs> Gas guzzlers, drywall experts, and other over-the-top situations you'll have to see to believe. Today, we are reacting to my strange addiction for the second time. And while I can honestly say I've never seen these video segments, I think it's important to remind everybody watching that while many of these addictions may appear humorous and or even shocking to some, it's important to lead with empathy and recognize that these are real people who might be suffering from serious medical or even life-threatening conditions. All right, let's dive right in. My name is Mark, I'm 20 years old, and I'm in a relationship with 15 inflatable animals. Inflatable animals relationship. Okay. My inflatables are the funnest creatures I have to hang out with in my life. Oh, kind of sad. They're soft, they're cuddly. The bigger they are, the better they are. Kind of means there's more to love. This individual, Mark, is filling the void in his life, not having somebody around, not having friends around, and he's developing a type of relationship with something to where it's not harmful to anybody else and doesn't really seem harmful to himself. First time I hugged my inflatable whale, I actually started feeling all that love uh -huh. and compassion that I never got from my mother. But he's actually able to identify like why he has them. It, this actually might be like the next step, almost like his own therapy, where he can then move on and develop a relationship with you know human beings that could then give emotion back. It's almost like if I'm going a little bit crazy. Charlie. Once I go home, basically give him a hug, give him a kiss. There is something called objectophilia, which is an individual is having either sexual feelings or emotional feelings towards an object. So it's something with Marx is experiencing. He kisses him every now and then, showing affection in that way, but it doesn't seem like he is having any fornication or any sexual relations in that manner. Some like different types of music, some don't. Some like to just be lazy and sleep all day. <laughs> I would say they get along together pretty well. It's not that abnormal. Think about it. Sometimes we develop relationships, say, with our favorite golf club, and people talk to it. We're like, all right, come on, don't let me down. He's just taking it to a little bit of an extreme. I wonder where Mark is now in his relationships with these inflatables versus relationship with other human beings. My name is Shannon. I'm 20 years old, and I'm addicted to drinking gasoline. What? No, danger zone, like don't do that, come on. I'll wake up, go to the washroom, and drink the what? gas. There are some times when I actually see people who come to the emergency department, people who actually drink gasoline, who are alcoholics, who are desperate to prevent withdrawals, and they'll drink some because there's ethanol within it. When I fill up my car, I'll put all what? over my hand. I am baffled, I am baffled. The other time actually I see it are mechanics will actually use the gasoline to wash their hands off, that they actually get like weird tingling and rash and redness to their skin. It tingles at first and then it burns the back of my throat. <laughs> She she even says says burn the, back of her throat. the reason why it's burning is it's actually burning the mucosa. Then you increase the risk of perforation. You have chronic pain where you need to come to the emergency department all the time. And then you increase your risk for potential cancers. I'm numb and I just don't feel any pain. And I know it hurts me, but yet I keep doing it because I'm addicted to it. She's admitting that she's addicted. Her current addiction at the moment is relating to this gasoline. Like she knows it's potentially not good for her, but she likes the way it makes her feel and she can't stop. And you have a few little alterations in your mouth, probably caused by yep. toxic substance. At least she's getting checked out by a doctor here. They're using an otoscope to look in the mouth, actually, which is just a light, which is easy. Tummy tender? Yeah, that hurts. That's the edge of your liver. Oh my goodness! This is already a little bit enlarged. If you're able to feel the liver right there, you have hepatomegaly, which is a medical term for enlarged liver. Having a enlarged organ because of things that you're doing is not good because eventually it will shut down and stop working. How's that feel? I can't feel that. You cannot feel that. This is where your nerves have been affected from the toxicity. Wow. There's a specific area within the nervous system that deals with sharpness. And if you can't feel that gasoline and chemical is affecting her nervous system, causing a type of peripheral type of neuropathy, not good. My name is Kevin. I'm 27 years old. I don't have any broken bones, but I'm addicted to putting orthopedic cast on my body. What? It's almost like a type of Munchausen where he wants to be injured, potentially getting secondary gain. Sympathy from other people? I don't know. I've done like two full arm casts two full leg casts. I've done two full leg casts and an arm cast. <laughs> the cast material is actually fiberglass. The older versions were like plaster of Paris. Can't wait to build a huge cast out of this stuff. 
No wonder why we don't have the medical supplies at the hospital. He has it all. It gives me like this high that I just can't really get any other way. And you know, there's a component of that kind of sympathy of having a cast on. If you just saw his cast, his, his pink cast on his leg, people wrote on it. So he's getting some sympathy from others. I absolutely love the attention I get. There's the answer. Getting attention and the feeling of people sympathizing towards you to make you feel good. He likes that and that's a large driving point of why he's wearing these. And then I love going out in public and then just seeing everybody Everybody like, oh, that, that gawk look, you know, it's just amazing. Wow. I feel bad that he needs these type of outward expressions to get the sympathy and caring that he needs. He seems like a normal guy, but he's got this interesting addiction. My name is Nicole. Okay. I'm 26 years old and I'm addicted to eating drywall. Drywall? Drywall is like a composite made of like glues and woods. Like we're not supposed to be ingesting these things and they can form bezoars in your stomach because there's glues in them so they can actually cause bowel obstructions. Nicole has been addicted to eating drywall for over seven years. It started innocently with a bite a of chalk. chalk. Oh my God. I, oh, oh, I can even like feel my teeth, like nails on the chalkboard. Now, Nicole ingests drywall up to six times a day. I wanna know what her insides look like. I wanna know what the color of her poop looks like. I wanna know if she's actually pooping. Is she just like super constipated and just has like a new structure inside of her belly? Like, is there a mini house inside of her intestines? Like, what is going on? I love the smell of drywall, the texture of it, the taste. So she has braces. She's spending all this money on helping herself, fixing your teeth, but she's doing this thing that we all know is not what you're supposed to be ingesting into your body. I take a piece like this and I take it and I break it. Then I'll take a bite out of it. This pains me so bad because you know one day she's going to end up in some emergency department, most likely not going to be forthright in the sense of telling us, hey, I eat drywall every day and this could be why I'm feeling this way. She'll come in with complaints of abdominal pain, bowel obstruction, all these different things. And then we'll find out later that she ingests drywall for the last seven years. And this is so preventable. Like, just don't eat it. Nicole's addiction spiraled out of control when her mother died five years ago. But it spiraled out of control when she lost a loved one. But did she just start like eating that chalk afterwards? Or was she dibble dabbling before that? And then it got worse when she went under emotional stress. And this is like her comfort. At this point, I do not really want to know what's in drywall. Wait a minute. Ask anybody at the hardware store what's in drywall and they will tell you what you're ingesting. And you, once you find that out, you're not gonna wanna continue to eat this. If you guys enjoyed this, check out this playlist right here. And as always, make sure you subscribe, turn those bell notifications on, hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.